Well, everyone, we have arrived. We have arrived at that special day, that momentous occasion. This is episode number 2000, episode number 2000. Here we are. Wow. It's been a while. It's been a minute, <laughs> as they say. Anyway, you know, I was kind of thinking, what do I do for episode 2000? Should I have one of our many famous guests on the show? We've had so many famous guests over the years. We've had numerous presidential candidates, and I don't just mean some guy that said he wanted to run for president. I mean like real presidential candidates. You know, the folks you saw in the presidential debates, Ron Paul, Ben Carson, Pat Buchanan, gosh, et cetera, et cetera, Andrew Yang, you know, we had, we had so many of them on the show, Steve Forbes, all of the rest. Should we have a famous guest on the show? right? And we've had, you know, countless thought leaders, authors. In addition to this show being at episode 2000, we have all of these other podcast shows as well. And overall, over the years since I started podcasting back in 2005, we've had about 9,000 interviews, <laughs> if you can believe that. 9,000, or I don't mean 9,000 interviews, 9,000 shows, because some of the shows I do myself just as a, a monologue with no guest, but most of them have a guest. So yeah, a lot of history here. It's been a long time. And I guess I want to start, well, let me go back to that thing about what should we do for episode 2000, right? We were going to do kind of a compilation and let you hear a bunch of snippets from prior episodes, but then we just got to the point where we're thinking that would be too big. It'd be too unwieldy. We've had too many episodes. We've had too many guests. There's no way you could pack that all in to a two hour 2000th episode show. <laughs> no, don't worry. This show won't be two hours. It's a, it's a normal length episode, normal length episode. But I thought the most important thing to talk about today on episode 2000 to mark the occasion was really about the most powerful asset that you have at your disposal. And you know, by the way, I'm a, I'm a fan of leverage. I love leverage on real estate. I love using debt productively when it comes to buying income properties, the most historically proven asset class in the world, the most tax favored asset class in America. But this asset you own free and clear already. And it is the most powerful thing at your disposal. It's the most powerful thing at my disposal. It's the most wondrous, amazing asset any of us have. And that is the human mind. It is at your disposal and you can use it to do incredible, incredible things as most of you already have done incredible, incredible things with your incredible free and clear mind. <laughs> and the mind and the brain are not exactly the same thing, of course, but they're kind of used interchangeably. And I will do that in this episode. So when I say brain, you know, I might be referring to mind or, or vice versa. But that's what today's show is going to be about. And fortunately, I had the, I guess, the lucky break of always being fascinated with the mind. I remember back in junior high school, I remember this girl, Robin, that I thought was really, really cute <laughs> back in junior high school, I had a crush on her. I remember when I was walking down the stairs, she pulled a book out of my back pocket, a small paperback book that I had in my back pocket of my Levi's 501 jeans. And she pulled the book out and she said, what are you reading? <laughs> and uh, the book was this book. It was the Silva mind control method. And that is a very famous method and technique of controlling our minds to do amazing, amazing things. And I remember I was reading that back in junior high school. I was always very interested in the power of the mind. I was even interested in kind of the occult power of the mind. I, I remember I used to follow Edgar Cayce in the old days and just any edge, you know, any edge you could get by using the power of your mind. I used to read books on creative dreaming and self-hypnosis and all of this kind of stuff. And I can't say I ever got very good at practicing any of that stuff, but I was always fascinated by the power of it. And then at age 17, I got very lucky and I virtually met my four great mentors, Dennis Waitley, Zig Ziglar, Jim Rohn, Earl Nightingale, 
And they, again, further taught me about the power of the mind and, and the incredible power we all have at our disposal. I remember uh, that I think it was Dennis Waitley, maybe Earl Nightingale, not sure, recommended that small, tiny book that you should all read called As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. You can get that anywhere. It's a very old book, but a a great book. And again, it just talks about the power of your thoughts. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, right? And back to scripture and, you know, you go back 2,500 years and this stuff has been documented through scripture throughout the years. It's an amazingly powerful asset that we all have at our disposal. You own one and it's free and clear and you can use it to do absolutely incredible things. You know, the placebo effect has been well documented over the years when it comes to health. And there are all sorts of studies on the placebo effect and all sorts of nuances to these studies and how if they gave someone a fake pill that was completely inert and it didn't do anything. And and they've studied what the doctor said the pill would do. And they've done that using different color pills and capsules and people take the pill or even they do an injection that is a placebo injection. And they will have miraculous pain relief or health benefits or whatever symptom they're having. It can be fixed through the power of the internal pharmacy at our disposal, the one we all own free and clear, and the endorphins, the serotonin, the dopamine, you know, managing all of these things, truly amazing. I remember that Dennis Waitley introduced me to the book, Anatomy of an Illness by Dr. Uh, by, well, I think he was a doctor, actually. I don't know, maybe he wasn't a doctor. I think he became a doctor. Dr. Norman Cousins, I wanna say doctor. I. I I think he did become a doctor actually, but I might be wrong on that. So fact check me (laughs) anyway, by Norman Cousins. And he went on to write a bunch of other books. And then I got interested in Dr. Bernie Siegel's books and just all of this great stuff about health and the influence of the mind. And and I remember studying Wayne Dyer's work on psychosomatic medicine and psychoneuroimmunology. And I remember back when I was 24 years old, I picked up a program by a company called CyberVision and learned all about holographic brain theory. This is just incredibly fascinating, incredibly powerful stuff. And I thought that's what today's episode should be about. So that's what we're going to talk about. But before we get to that, and we're actually going to run a rather long segment, actually, from a show I did quite a while back, but I just thought it was so important that, you know, really, that would be the best thing for episode 2000 today. But before we do that, I just want to offer a, a heartfelt thank you to all of you who have followed my work for so, so long. I, I know that some of you have been listening to my content for eight years. You've been listening for almost two decades <laughs> to the to the stuff I've been publishing. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just totally honored. And that's the reason I do it. I mean, look, I became financially independent a long, long time ago. I don't need to do this. I don't need to work. I could just lay on a beach somewhere, but I'd be bored. I'd be bored out of my mind. So I do love doing it. But what really keeps me motivated and what really keeps me going and doing this is getting all this great feedback from you, knowing that the work we're doing together, that the content we're putting out, and and, you know, many of you have been on the show, many of you clients over the years have come on the show to share your experiences with investing or your life's journey or whatever. And, And we certainly appreciate having you on the show and would love to have more of you on the show. But getting the feedback from you on how this is impacting your life, how this work is important to you is super valuable. So we always appreciate you writing reviews and sharing the show with your friends and your family and your coworkers and just helping us get the word out. So we very much appreciate that. But I know that many of you have told me over the years that you've listened to every episode that I've published 
two or even three times, which is absolutely amazing. And some of you, if you're you're married and you're a couple and one of you discovered the show, and I've heard a lot of jokes over the years about the other spouse saying, oh, you know, they made me listen to your show and now I can't get your voice out of my head. Uh, But uh, anyway, I I appreciate that so much that you're uh, you're listening to the show, that you're sharing the show and that the work has been valuable to you. So we'll keep it going for many, many years years to come. That's the plan. And hopefully in the not too distant future here in about three years, I'll be talking to you about episode 3000. Then maybe three years after that, give or take, you know, it's not exact. You know, we'll be talking about episode number 4000, 5000, 6000, whatever. I don't know if my math's right on that three years or what. Anyway, whatever, you get the idea. But a lot of episodes, oh, you know, I'm doing the number of days, not the number of episodes. That's right. But anyway, we'll be talking about episode 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 in the future. And we'll keep it going for an indefinite amount of time. And just so much appreciate you listening and sharing the show with everybody. And so today, uh, let's go to a piece from a prior episode, a piece that I did on the power of the mind, the most amazingly powerful entity that any of us have at our disposal, that you have at your disposal. And like Earl Nightingale says, you own one free and clear. So use it to its highest and best use. You know, I I started getting into this stuff long before anyone ever said the word biohacking, (laughs) right? So I figured that was a good topic for today's 2000th episode show. So let's go ahead and listen in to that. And again, thank you all for sticking with my work for so long, even for as long as 18 years, many of you. So we appreciate it. And here is that piece about the power of the mind. What is more important for anything in life than our mindset and our ability to manage the most amazing, most powerful force known to mankind? And that is our mind. That is the most powerful force of all, and it is a really, really important force. So we are going to talk about the importance of guided visualization and the importance of managing our subconscious mind. One of the most amazing things is that our subconscious mind is always working in the background. It is literally performing zillions, yes, more than billions of tasks and processes to maintain our body, to make our our breathing happen, our entire autonomic system, our heartbeat, our cellular regeneration, just every sense. It is absolutely amazing. It has incredible power. It is working behind the scenes to shape our beliefs, our attitudes. Earl Nightingale said to ask, what is the role of attitude in someone's success or failure is like asking, what is the role of water in the Pacific Ocean? <laughs> it's, it's everything, right? It's, it's so incredibly important. But our subconscious mind has a major flaw However, this incredible, giant, gaping flaw in our subconscious mind can be hacked. And it can be hacked in a way that makes it a huge benefit. You know, they say that every cloud has a silver lining, every dog has his day, every disadvantage can be turned into a very powerful advantage. And with the subconscious mind, There is no exception to that. So what is the flaw and how can we use it to our advantage? How can we exploit the flaw in the subconscious mind? How can we hack our brain to make it more powerful, to get it to do what we want it to do? Well, here it is. First, the flaw. Okay, this is the giant flaw. And it's a biggie. You ready for this? The subconscious mind cannot tell the difference. 
It is a terrible judge. It is a terrible judge because it cannot tell the difference between reality and something that is vividly and repeatedly imagined with sensory specific detail. That is a giant flaw. You know, I indulged myself occasionally <laughs> in a debate on Facebook. Almost always a complete waste of time, but it does sharpen my skills, okay? So it's not a complete waste of time. And it does broaden my understanding as I sometimes learn from people who are just clueless, clueless people, okay? Uh, usually these are in the form of political debates. And you wanna say to some people, Get real, man. You don't know what you're talking about. Get real, right? Get real. Get in touch with reality. You're out of touch with reality, right? We we think this about our, our fellow humans sometimes. You know, we think that they're just, where do they get these crazy ideas? Where do they get them from? Are they nuts? They're just so out of touch with reality. We say things like, they're not grounded in reality. They're not on firm ground, right? And this grounding, if you will, in reality is something that the subconscious mind, it, it's just terrible at this. It is not grounded in reality, okay? It, you can imagine something and you can trick it. You can hack it. You can fool it. And you can do that in a very good and very powerful way. So, what do we do? Since the subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between reality and imagination, think of the last time you had a really powerful dream. And, you know, you woke up and, and you thought that dream was so real. Sometimes you're thinking it was so great, I want to go back. Could I just please fall asleep again and, and go back? Sometimes the people use substances or uh, motion, literally motion. Like, why do we ride a roller coaster? Why do we ride a skateboard or a bike or surf a wave or ski down a hill? Because this motion changes our reality. It's like a drug. And people, of course, can do this with substances, and obviously they can abuse substances, very dangerous uh, road. But, you know, there's a whole new field of psychedelics, right? Well, it's not a new field, but there's a new, shall we say, kind of interest and acceptance of this stuff as maybe a gateway into a uh, higher or at least a different level of consciousness, right? And so this can move us into these different states, these different planes of reality. There are many books on these subjects, and the famous poem by Coolidge was written after he consumed opium. I guess he smoked it. Is that what you do? You smoke it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he smoked opium and then fell asleep and had this dream and basically wrote Kubla Khan in his dream, right? You know, to sake the sacred river elf, to walk the caves of ice, to break my fast on honeydew and drink the milk of paradise, Xanadu, right? Those are lyrics to a song by the incredibly talented band Rush, but it's based on Kublai Khan, okay? And so these altered states of reality can be very, very powerful. And people are starting to study that and realize that, you know, maybe some of these plant medicines have incredible power to help people with psychiatric conditions and things like that. So it's a fascinating field. And, you know, this stuff has been illegal in the U.S. because, you know, to some extent, we have really silly laws sometimes. Not all of them. Some are great. Some are silly. You know, we'll see. There's a whole new field opening up about all this stuff that's really quite fascinating. But the point is, the subconscious mind, how do we hack it? How do we use it? How do we make it work for us? See, a lot of people have dark imaginings, worries. Dale Carnegie wrote a great book many, many decades ago, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living, right? And these worries that we all have, they can take over. And why do they take over? Well, it's because our subconscious mind imagines them as real. And many of these worries are just 
small potatoes. They're not a big deal, okay? Yet they consume us. Sometimes they lead us to absolute breakdown. They lead us to divorce. They lead us to financial ruin. They lead us to suicide. They're awful, these worries, these dark imaginings, because we continue to visualize them with detailed sensory perception, and our subconscious mind can't tell the difference. They think it's real when it's just a worry. It's just a dark imagining. It hasn't happened. It's just something you're predicting might happen. And guess what? What you predict and what you expect comes true. Someone who thinks that everybody is out to get them, or someone who thinks that everybody is a racist, well, guess what? They're going to project that belief into reality. And you know what's going to happen? Other people will do their best to try and live up to their expectations. And this creates the vicious cycle of where an imagining, a worry, just an idea, becomes reality. It is literally, the seed is planted, it is created right out of a person's mind. It's not necessarily real. Reality is somewhat neutral most of the time, okay? Where we just create our reality. We are the author of our condition, right? And so that's why this is such a powerful thing and I wanted to bring it to you today. But I just want to wish you the very best and I want to say visualize the things you do want in your life with sensory specific detail. Welcome fellow investors. As we prosper together on this journey of wealth and possibilities, find yourself in a comfortable position. Take a deep breath. Relax. Allow the stillness of this moment to guide you. Take another nice, long breath. Smile. Everything is going your way. Imagine your breath filling you up with confidence, certainty, and a knowing beyond that which you see. Your breath is now traveling through your body, starting at your feet, awakening the souls that hold you up. Prosperity is right here within. All you have to do is tap in. Bring your hands together, palms facing up, allowing yourself to receive all that you have earned, invested, manifested for your highest good and the good of others. All things are possible. Believe. You maintain control as a direct investor. You have control of your financial future. You are calmly reassured about your retirement. As a direct investor, you follow Jason's commandment number three. Thou shalt maintain control. You know that people who relinquish control of their money leave themselves susceptible to three major problems. One, they might be investing with a crook. Two, they might be investing with an idiot. Three, they will almost certainly be paying outrageous fees to the manager of the deal. You know that return of investment is more important than return on investment. As an educated, direct investor, you eliminate most of your investment risk because you are in control. Breathe. You now embody these truths as your own. I maintain control as a direct investor. I have control of my financial future. I am calmly reassured about my retirement. Your breath gently moves through your legs, up your thighs, around your hips, releasing, rejuvenating, replenishing all that has been locked down. I allow success in. I prosper in perfect timing, in harmony with the universe, with all business transactions and relationships. Relax your hands. Your breath soothes, softens, and massages your belly cradling your waist, 
moving up through your chest, expanding your back. Envision here your ultimate self, highest expression, greatest life. You are worthy of infinite abundance, financial prosperity, optimal earnings. Smile. Everything is coming your way. Follow your breath through your neck, your face, and head, nodding yes to all that is and all that is becoming. I am a creative being with limitless possibilities. Feel your lightness and perfection as you delve into your next extraordinary and prosperous investment. You are a gift. Receive, believe, and so it is. Visit jasonhartman.com.